Welcome to our webinar today, Change Request Management Goes SAP Cloud ALM. Uh, so my name is Moritz Giesler, so I'm product owner for the change and deployment part in SAP Cloud ALM. And with me, I do have my dear colleague, Valeria. My name is Valeria Loschke. Hi, everyone. I'm a product expert for SAP Solution Manager and Focus Build. All right, then let's go into the topic. So first of all, as always, legal disclaimer so that everything is proprietary to SAP and everything is as well subject to change. Yeah. And um, yeah, since we have our hashtag there as well from our ALM Summit uh, back in October, you could still use it as a hashtag for your social media posts. Um, and coming to the agenda maybe for today. So first of all, we would like to go uh, through a short introduction. So um, talking a little bit about change control versus change enablement, because there is maybe some confusion around these topics. Um, then we will talk about the collected feedback of customers and partners, what we have there. Uh, what are the main requirements, the main requests? Um, before we go then into a capability overview, kind of comparing um, SAP Cloud um, ALM to uh, SAP Solution Manager Change Request Management, uh, before we go then into a co capability focus, um, focusing on a few topics in more detail, uh, like for example, the change cycles, uh, different types of changes and the workflow, um, downgrade protection, transport of copies, cross-system object logs, uh, roles and authorizations as well a big topic in the whole change request management process and the topic of uh, the custom fields that we have and that are very common and mainly used as well in your processes. Um, at the end, there will be a short wrap up um, showing you in the end what are the next steps. All right, then we could go into the introduction. So change control versus change enablement. So most likely it is like that thinking when you hear the word change control it implies at the end to be more strict right so that you have a strict control process i would say within your change request management um and it seems to be there um, that you have more yeah uh, guidelines i would say and, and and more checks and and some limitations i would say within the process that you need to stick to uh, change enablement i would say when you hear it the first time is more like implying that you are more flexible so um that you can use in the end a change management in a sense, but you can and have it in a more flexible way and it's not that strict, so you don't have that many guardrails there. But at the end, it is like that the change enablement utilizes at the end only the best practices to build your change process that is tailored to your individual needs. Um, so that's the idea behind. So when you see that, that you can use different best practices to build a change process that is tailored to your needs as a customer, um, then we see that somehow change control, change enablement goes hand in hand, right? So because change control is still possible as well with change enablement, because if in your process you want to be more strict, you have then as well maybe some um, guardrails within your whole process, then you can as well tailor it with change enablement. So at the end, it is not like that those two terms are standing as opponents uh, uh, towards each other. So it's it's more like, that they are going hand in hand there. And it's just like a new terminology that we have there with the change enablement. Of course, the focus of SAP Cloud ALM at the moment is more on agility. So um, we are looking more into this direction that you do incremental enhancements and you have then a continuous feature delivery um, where we are mainly using deployment on demand. So that's what we are doing at the moment. Um, but that does not mean that we are not listening to our customers. Um, so we're still listening to our customers and we are looking into the direction how we can as well um, help and support customers that have a change request management in place that is highly sophisticated. And with that, I would hand over to Valeria to talk a little bit about the collected feedback. Thank you, Moritz. We ask customers and partners to rank change request management functionality based on their importance and uh, usage, uh, frequency, usage of frequency. Um, and uh, we divided the capabilities in uh, three categories and we created a heat map based on the feedback we collected. The first category is the technical security functionalities. And the top voted feature here are the conditional status checks you may know them as consistency check uh, in change request management. For example, there is a check for successful import into the productive system. 
Um, this feature is followed by various transport related features. We have the cross system object lock followed by downgrade protection, cross reference check, critical objects. We have also retrofit, ATC checks and code, code inspector integration. In the category transport features, the winner is transport of copies followed by the status dependent import and the status update of change documents that is done automatically by the import job. And um, we also have the import of a complete, complete project. That means um, you may know it from CHARM as a project import all. The next category is release management and workflows. Here we have the usage of urgent and normal changes followed by requirements and requests for changes, um, email notifications, the usage of defect and defect corrections, the usage of four eyes principle, standard check with allow list checks and main individual approval workflows, and the usage of various cycles like the continuous cycle, phase cycle and release cycle. So in a nutshell, we can say that the top features are urgent changes and normal changes, the usage of transport of copies and the usage of consistency checks. Now moving on to the capability overview and with that over to you, Moritz. Thanks a lot, Valeria. So um, what we've seen so far is what at the end is requested by customers the most and what is most important. And uh, now we have here our capability comparison. Yeah? So on the left-hand side, we can see SAP Solution Manager change request management capabilities. And on the right hand side, we see the SAP Cloud ALM change and deployment capabilities. And um, first of all, we have here on the list the change cycle concept, because at the end, that's something that was maybe not highest on the list, I would say, of the requested things. But on the other hand, it is something um, that's anyway the foundation, I would say, of this whole change request management process. And that's why we say change cycle concept, we have it already partially in um, SAP Cloud ALM because we have the deployment plan with the releases. So that's why we have here already the check um, in brackets, I would say, because partially we can already support this. Um, but we will come to that in detail then as well in a few minutes. Um, second, we have here on the list the project import all. Um, so there we have already in SAP Cloud ALM options to deploy multiple features to production together. So that's why we have a check here. Um, it's still a deploy that you need to trigger then from within the feature overview in SAP Cloud ALM. So um, feature as kind of our change document that we have there. Um, but still, it is possible to deploy several features together to production to do kind of a project import. Um, selective imports as well very important. That's definitely something we can offer in SAP Cloud ALM because we have the deploy functionalities within the features. So different features can be, can be deployed. Uh, different times. Um, and that is closely related to the batch imports, right? So everybody is used to that with a batch import, maybe the changes are um, then as well deployed or imported into the test stage. And there we are looking into having something like a time-based import on SAP Cloud ALM end. And um, that's the definition where you can take them, for example, per feature that is in a particular status, you would like to have the import to be done every hour, for example, and then the imports will be triggered then, for example, to the test stage each and every hour. Uh, but the same could be as well combined with your deploy to production. Um, we have here a time horizon, so that's planned short term. That would mean it's something planned for Q1, Q2, 2023. Another big topic are custom fields. Um, we'll come to that as well in more details. So there we have um, Cloud ALM tags and references, but as mentioned, we will Explain that in more detail. That's as well planned short term, should be there already in Q1, Q2 as well. Um, we have the different involved roles in the change process and authorizations. So that's something that we plan as well on Cloud ALM and in midterm. So that would mean that's something that is planned for 2023 at the latest beginning 2024, uh, where we would like to have then additional roles and more fine granular authorizations. Um, but we will show as well it how the concept looks like or the conceptual work. Um, those technical security checks like downgrade protection, transport of copies we put there as well, or cross-system object lock, there we are planning similar fun functionality that is as well planned then for 2023, beginning 2024, um, but we will come to that later. 
um, flexible workflow on uh, SAP Solution Manager and for change request management, definitely something very important with the force R4Is principle and the different approvals that you have there. So there we are planning um, the SAP workflow management integration. So now it's the, the robotic process automation integration at the end where we would like to integrate with the, the workflow part. Um, different types of changes as well, very heavily used on uh, change request management and like normal changes, urgent changes that we've seen beforehand as well. Uh, we will provide additional feature types in SAP Cloud ALM. Uh, we will not match what we have in uh, the solution manager area where you could at the end create uh, yeah, different transaction types. Um, so that will not be um, that bridge, I would say, in feature types what we will provide at the beginning, but we definitely have plans for that as well. Um, conditional workflows um, as well important as we've seen uh, means that there are some checks in there and that uh, in the end maybe some actions and activities are as well bound to the workflow. That's definitely something that we look into. So there we will have constraints and activities that will be triggered as well by the status change in SAP Cloud ALM. Uh, that's as well planned midterm. Modifications, of course, very important. In-app we will most likely have very soon. Uh, and email notifications will as well come further down the road 2023. And then we have here one topic, and that's the API topic. That's maybe more yeah, standalone thing on the cloud ALM end, because we would like to provide as well APIs that you could utilize uh, to build upon, um, and that are then as well publicly uh, weighable in the business API app. Regarding product vision, so that's more than 2024 20, and beyond. Uh, so there we will have then things like cross-reference checks, critical objects. We will look as well into retrofit topics. Um, so there is a lot more to come, but that's, as mentioned, more product vision there. And uh, digital signature, for example, at the moment not planned. Um, so that's as well something where we will focus on later what could happen in that area where maybe APIs could be used then as well. And now um, just to visualize what we will go into in detail. Um, so we will look on the change cycle concept a little, more, a little bit more in detail. Uh, we will look into custom fields, the different involved roles in the processes, those technical checks that we have there, or those technical security features. A little bit about the flexible workflow, maybe as well together with the conditional workflow and the different types of changes. And then we will as well focus a little bit on the APIs. Okay, now I've talked a lot. Um, with that, we can come to our capability focus. And uh, there, I would like to hand over to Valeria again. Thank you, Moritz. In SAP Solution Manager, we offer three types of deployment strategies. Um, the continual deployment offers you full flexibilities in terms of development and imports. That means that you can deploy whenever you like. So this can happen either individually or bundled like on demand daily or weekly, and you don't need to follow any phases and there are also no gates. So full flexibility here. Now moving on to the phase-driven deployment, which gives you more control over your deployment. This strategy is relevant for projects or wave-based uh, transport management. And with this approach, all changes and transports that belong to a specific cycle will be imported together. It is a, uh, it's a import all. It's basically, it's a project import all but you have more control here as the changes and transports are following the phases of the cycle. Now, moving on to release management, which gives you full control uh, over your deployment management. You're basically planning your releases and you define relationship and dependencies between uh, each release. And you can have multiple projects that are bundled into a specific release. And um, the import job is done, of course, for the um, entire release content. Um, the different projects, they may have different development phases, but all of them are tested together and they all go together into production. Moving on to the change cycle concept in Cloud ILM. And with that, back over to you, Moritz. Thanks a lot. Um, so, yeah, what do we have there? Um, we have definitely in focus as well those different change cycle options or concepts. And first of all, starting with the continual deployment, 
So that's at the end already available in SAP Cloud ALM because you only have the prerequisite that there needs to be a project available that you are working in, and then you can do a deploy on demand. Yeah. So means based on the features, so on our change documents that we have in SAP Cloud ALM, you can trigger a deploy on demand. So that's already possible. Um, when we go to this phase-driven deployment, and that's very important. Um, so there we have already deployment plans available in SAP Cloud ALM, and those deployment plans consist of several releases. Um, what we plan to do there is that we will have as well phases per release. So that's as well planned, planned midterm. So remembering planned midterm means something like 2023, beginning 2024. And um, then we can as well uh, yeah, check or support then a deployment based on the phases per release. So we could think of that you have there, for example, a build phase, a test phase, and a deploy phase. And based on the phase that you are in within your release of the deployment plan, um, there are certain actions or activities possible to do um, with relation or with regards to the features that we have in SAP Cloud ALM. Um, Maybe to mention there as well, just to add this, the deployment plan, it's not only, it's not only including the releases that we have there. There is as well an inclusion of the different system groups. So means the different landscape tracks that you have there. So means at the end later on, you have as well then the option to use a deployment plan, maybe for a certain landscape track, then as well for several projects and since the deployment plan can be reused for projects, we are coming already into this release management um, cycle concept in a sense, um, because the dependencies between releases uh, can be covered within a deployment plan. And uh, since this deployment plan can then be assigned to several projects in parallel, several projects need to stick at the end to the same releases that we have within a deployment plan. That's still product vision, so that still would take some time because we will have definitely then a different view on this whole topic than if we are talking about kind of release management cycle. Um, but at the end, it's kind of similar to the phase-driven deployment like already explained by Valeria. So it's more like that we are looking then on a broader picture and have their uh, broader picture in the, um, in the game there as well for the deployment later. All right, that's mainly about our change cycle concept in SAP Cloud ALM. With that, I would hand back to Valeria regarding the types of changes. Thank you, Moritz. In SAP Solution Manager, we are highly flexible and we basically support all type of changes. And we offer a lot of change types, as you can see here. Uh, with normal change, um, you can manage daily, daily maintenance and implementation project. The normal change depends on the cycle phase. That means that it really follows the phase of a specific cycle. And a normal change is integrated with SAP transport management. That means that a normal change can handle um, ABAP objects. That would be CTS, change transport system, non-ABAP objects, which is CTS plus, and cloud changes for BTP, which would be cloud TMS. Standard change. Uh, is an uncritical and frequently used change that um, is a low risk and it doesn't need an approval. A standard change is independent from the cycle phase and similar to the normal change, it is integrated with SAP transport management. Urgent change is meant to deal with emergency changes. It um, knows the fastest track towards a production system and it doesn't follow any cycle phases. It is integrated with SAP transport management as well. The admin change is used for documentation and administrative activities. Um, it is related to a system landscape, but it is not integrated in SAP transport management. General change can manage changes on IT assets like printers, mobile devices, but it doesn't need to be necessarily related to any project or system landscape. The default correction is used during the test phase of implementation or, or maintenance projects. It is used to document defects and their fixes, and um, it is integrated in SAP transport management. Um, the latest addition to the change request management family is the Git enable change. 
It basically enables DevOps processes with ABOP. It means that you can manage ABOP changes using the Git enable change and transport system GCTS. Now on to the change types in Cloud LM and back to you, Moritz. Thanks a lot, Valeria. So um, as we've seen, there are a lot of change types available in, in uh, SAP Solution Manager. Um, since with SAP Cloud ELM, we have a more simplistic view on these types of changes, I would say. And just to compare both in a sense. So in SAP Solution Manager, we have IT requirements or requests for change. In SAP Cloud ELM, we only have the requirements at the moment. Mm -hmm. So from an IT requirement or request for change, there could be several, yeah, change documents or change types that could be created from there in SAP Solution Manager. So there we have the normal change, the standard change, urgent change, admin change, general change, git enable change, and defect correction, like Valeria already explained. Uh, in SAP Cloud ALM, it is simpler. At the moment, we do have the feature there. Um, so the feature can be used in a sense like, I would say, urgent change, yeah, because it's kind of a deploy on demand. Uh, but it's definitely something that we would like to evolve uh, since we've seen as well the, the cycle concepts and how then a feature could respect that as well different phases of releases, for example. In addition, we definitely want to have a correction. So that would be something that will come um, pretty soon. So it's planned midterm already. Uh, so 2023, we will have then a, diff a second feature type, the correction available. Uh, that could be used then as well for defect corrections, for example, or if you have to do any fixes so that you could at the end then uh, distinguish between features that are there maybe for an, yeah, an implementation project or an improvement project and corrections that you need to do to uh, yeah, maintain in the end your productive landscape. In addition, we have as well user stories and project tasks. Um, those are more like, yeah, documentary or descriptive items that we have in SAP Cloud ALM. Um, so there you could, for example, as well add some information like, yeah, somebody needs to do some changes like an admin change yeah, or a general change that needs to be done. It could be as well then um, done via user stories or project tasks. Uh, so that would be the idea to have there always this combination. And the requirement is then at the end, the bundle where you could have then for example, features and corrections that are more than for yeah, the transport management integrated uh, type of changes. And you have as well user stories and project tasks that you could combine there. That's at the end closely related to these different flexible workflows. And uh, we can see here the workflow that we have at the moment for features. So it's coming from in specification. You can start the implementation. Then you are with the feature in implementation status. Um, when you did confirm then the deployment to QAS, you can go with the feature into in testing. You can later on approve it for the production. So it's ready for production uh, so that you can deploy the feature to production properly. And then you can confirm the deployment. At the beginning, you have as well an option to set it to not planned if you would like to postpone a feature, for example. But how could we flexibilize this um, whole workflow? Because at the moment, it's a strict workflow, uh, just a move forward workflow in that sense. And the idea is that on the one hand, uh, we provide you some kind of sub workflows that are predefined. Uh, that's just an example that we can see here, uh, like that in testing, you have kind of sub workflow where you could say, okay, now the feature is ready for testing. Now somebody started with the test and then you have an information about testing failed or successfully tested so that you could decide, can I now approve for production? Uh, so is my feature ready for production there? So these would be predefined sub workflows that could be then uh, embedded in your workflow, I would say, at certain stages. Yeah, here, for example, in testing as, as one simple example. The more sophisticated solution would be then via the APIs that we are integrating with the SAP workflow management. As mentioned, that's now the, the robotic process automation part that we have on the SAP business technology platform. And there you can easily embed some sub workflows that you create there with the workflow management. And idea is kind of the same. Yeah, you will get um, different integration points where you could say, okay, we have some sub workflow, sub workflows, um, where we want to have, for example, a 4i approval or something like that in between so that we can get from one uh, status in SAP Cloud ALM4 feature to the next one. And it's not only for the features, so it's as well something that could be utilized then for 
uh, for example, user stories or project tasks as well. And maybe just to add this, so the combination then of maybe some of the new feature types that we would have together with this flexible workflow. So there we can have then at the end some kind of different change types available where you could then define it to your needs. Okay, coming back to the technical security functionalities and to Valeria again. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, in SDP Solution Manager, we offer uh, various very nice transport features, transport check features. Um, we offer the downgrade protection, which is basically the guard dog for your system landscape. It keeps your system landscape consistent and safe and prevents overtakers and downgrades. The downgrade protection basically tracks object in, objects in transport requests and reports conflict when object is saved in two or more transport requests. Those checks are performed during the reassign, release, or import of transports. Uh, moving on to transport of copies, which, uh, as you hopefully already remember, is um, one of the top voted features from, from the collected feedback. Um, a transport of copy is basically a clone of a original transport. And it allows you to test functionalities in the quality assurance system without the need of releasing the original transport request in the development system. This means this gives you more control over all your ob objects as you keep them longer locked in the development system. Um, QCs are only imported into the direct follow-up systems and would never go to production. And by using TOCs, you reduce the number of transports that are imported in the pre-prod or production system, which um, has a positive impact, impact of the performance of your import. And last but not least, we offer the cross-system object lock. It basically enables you to have a central repository for customizing and workbench for changed customizing and work workbench objects in the solution manager. And um, it basically enables you to define the different conflict scenarios. And uh, with those conflict scenarios, you can control the handling of changes of the same object in different transport. As an example, um, imagine we um, there is a developer. The developer changes a specific object in the development system. And when the object is recorded into the transport request, this information will be sent to the solution manager and will be stored in the central repository. So now, when a second developer tries to change the same object in the development system, there will be um, information sent back from the solution manager to the developer and based on the scenarios that have been defined the developer will be able to um, record the object into the transport request or and we will receive a warning that the object is already touched and stored in another transport request or there will be an error and the developer will be not able to record the object in the transport request now moving on to the capabilities or the similar capabilities in Cloud ILM. And with that, back to you, Moritz. Thanks a lot, Valeria. So um, perfectly explained as well the cross-system object logs because that's maybe not too, that much known to each and everyone how that's handled, but it's it's really great feature as well. Um, so what we plan in Cloud ELM is definitely we would like to have as well a downgrade protection. Uh, so the idea there is that we are as well utilizing then the deployment plan that was uh, explained at the beginning. And since this deployment plan can then serve several projects, the idea would be that if each and every transport is as well managed via SAP Cloud ELM, yeah, we would have there as well kind of a relation to the deployment plan. Um, and so we can then have kind of a downgrade check yeah, in terms of that we would like to yeah, release or deploy then uh, different features to the next stages um, so that we can help and guide the end users that there would be a problem of an overtake or something like that and you can take then um, the correct measures there. Um, coming to the transport of copies, we can see here as well kind of a yeah, draft view on it. Um, so it's something like most likely you would like to have a talk button, so transport of copies button there. and um, 
that would create um, transport of copies based on the transports that are assigned to a feature. Uh, so that's the idea at the moment. And then as well, it will be released and deployed to the next stage. Yeah. So it's already uh, possible at the moment to assign transport of copies to a feature. Uh, but those transport of copies need to be created manually in the system. So it should be more automatic. So that's why we would like to provide some easy option as well to say, okay, for my feature, I would like to create a transport of copies for some of those transport requests. And last but not least, the cross system object log. Uh, there we will have at the end as well a kind of uh, check that is based on the deployment plan uh, so that we can serve as well several parallel projects in that sense. Um, it's just like that it would be Cloud ALM managed and not SAP Solution Manager managed, but the idea is that we have a similar functionality available there. And um, that's planned, I would say, as well midterm, but it's going as well a bit into this, this, this product vision because we need to see if we can do it then at the beginning 2024 or if it's more like mid-2024. So just that you're aware as well of the, the time horizon. All right, um, that's it about those technical security functionalities. Um, now coming to the different roles and authorizations and handing back to Valeria again. Thank you, Moritz. In Solution Manager, we offer multiple roles for the change request management process. Everything starts with a requester who identifies a need uh, for a change and creates a request for change directly, or a IT support employee um, creates a request for change out of a incident or a problem. The change manager um, evaluates, approves, and monitors change requests. We have also the role change advisory board, which is the steering committee that oversees the change management process. Developer is also a very important role. The developer implements a change and hands it over to the tester. The tester tests the change and sets the status in the change document accordingly. That means that if the test is successful, the status is set to successful test, or if not, the document is sent back to developer for the fix. And last but not least, the IT operator is the person who takes care of deployments and software logistics. And with that, back to you, Moritz. Tell us about authorization concept in Cloud ILM. Thanks a lot. Um, so it's it's a bit more simple, I would say, in that sense, um, because we have, I would say, a few roles less at the moment. Um, so we have the, the requester that could be each and every team member at the moment, could create a requirement directly in SAP Cloud ILM. Um, we have as well APIs available, so it could be as well and done from, from outside. Um, if you have any other tool that you are using for um, your requirements management. Um, we have the change manager in the game. So you can see we don't have the IT operator in that sense um, because uh, we have no ITSM, so no incident management uh, that we have at the moment in the game in SAP Cloud ALM. So that's why the IT operator is not yet there. Uh, we definitely have then the change manager who is categorizing, managing, and monitoring the features in SAP Cloud ALM. So he or she is the, the main responsible there as well for the features. We definitely will have there a developer yeah, who is the one implementing the changes and handing it over to the test stage. Uh, we will definitely have as well a tester. Um, tester is already there as a role as a test expert in SAP Cloud ALM. Um, that is pre-delivered and that's the one who is testing then the changes and could set then as well the status in a change document means in our feature. And last but not least, we have a deployment manager who is then at the end taking care of the software logistics. So it's just like a, a renaming that we have there. So these are planned yeah, so that we have all those different roles available. And we are looking as well into options so that we provision additional role collections. So in the end, yeah, authorization role collections. Um, where you can then create your own custom roles. And it's an idea as well that you could, and you could do this at the moment already, you could create as well new project roles, yeah, custom project roles. And those project roles could then be as well mapped to the authorization roles, to the custom authorization roles that you have created. And by that, you could then easily later on uh, provide then different authorizations to your project team members just by adding them to a role. So that's the idea, that's the vision that we have there to keep it as simple as possible. All right, having said that, we come to the custom fields topic in SAP Solution Manager and back to Valeria there. Thank you, Moritz. In SAP Solution Manager, 
we can define new fields and new tables to enhance uh, our applications. Um, it's integrated in the UI configuration tool in the CRM web UI. Um, there is the so-called application enhancement tool available, which gives you the possibility very easily to add fields, define tables, maintaining maintain check tables or such helps. Um, you're also able to, to add translations directly and also maintain drop-down fields. And this is this is done really easy and uh, it doesn't require any deep development knowledge. Now back to you, Moritz. Tell us about custom fields strategy in Cloud ILM. As you could imagine, <clears throat> Cloud ILM is as well a bit more simple there, I would say. Yeah. So um, our idea at the moment is that for the custom fields, we are providing tags. So at the end, it is easy and simple to tag items in SAP Cloud ALM to categorize them. So for example, as we can see here, you can just easily add, okay, it's uh, this feature is AMAP related and it's something for SAP as well on a Cloud Private Edition. And you could easily do then as well a reporting based on these tags. You, know, you can easily figure out and filter for it uh, what's related to different tags or keywords that you have there. And um, since we know as well that the custom fields are often as well used to, to reference items, uh, we definitely want to provide there as well a reference section uh, where you could then, for example, just easily reference a ticket of an external ITSM tool, for example. Because as mentioned, we don't have ITSM on board in SAP Cloud ALM, so most likely you have an IT service management tool at hand. And if you would like to reference it, for example, to a feature, then the idea is that we will have references you could add then just a reference ID, a link then as well to your tool. And then you would see that you have there this link information available with the ID and you can navigate them to the third party tool as well. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's very lean. Um, it's definitely something uh, where you need to get used to, I would say, um, because we have there really the simplistic approach. Um, but it's pretty powerful if you dig deeper into those different options that we have there. All right. Having said that, we are already at the end for the wrap up. Um, and we have not yet talked about the APIs in detail, I would say. Um, but the APIs and the API uh, idea or ideation that we have there on Cloud ALM end is that it, you could use them to extend, innovate, and add value on top of SAP Cloud ALM as usual. Um, there could be some built-in integrations with third-party solutions yeah, that we are looking into, but there could be as well integrations via the Business Technology Platform Integration Suite, yeah, via Open Connector or Cloud Platform Integration into third-party tools where you get all the APIs in the SAP API Business Hub that you could use there. And um, they are at the end designed to let customers and partners and different third-party components extending as well Cloud ALM ca capabilities not only for implementation, what we are mainly looking at at the moment with the change management, but as well for operations and to innovate then on top of SAP uh, application lifecycle management core capabilities. Extensibility opportunities there are, for example, as mentioned, the predefined workflows utilizing the SAP workflow management, where you could then um, offer predefined workflows as well. Um, for, for customers, for example, or customers could uh, then as well create their own workflows there. Digital signature, as we've seen as well in the comparison uh, table, not planned on Cloud ALM end. Um, so that's as well something that could be embedded via the APIs that we will provide there. And as well, a topic that we will not tackle is a template protection. So that's as well one um, kind of spot where uh, there are extensibility opportunities then as well for customers and partners. Okay. Now we've talked a lot about how um, SAP Solution Manager Change Request Management and Cloud ALM Change and Deployment Management can be compared. And um, here we would like to show then in the last slide how this change management will evolve in SAP Cloud ALM. And what we have at the moment is kind of a change management light, I would say. Yeah? So we have incremental enhancements. So that means at the end you have the features based on the features in SAP Cloud ALM. Uh, you can drive your changes through your landscape with a deploy on demand approach. We have this continual cycle, so means at the end, continuous feature deployment is the idea. Um, so the, the thoroughly sliced um, 
features that you have there, uh, they can be driven through the landscape as mentioned as a deploy on demand. Um, at the end, you have as well options to deploy several features together to production, uh, where we have in the feature overview options for it, and you have a feature traceability. So that's why we say it's change management light because you can keep track of your changes, but it's at the moment not that, um, yeah, highly sophisticated, I would say, in terms of technical checks that uh, we know from SAP um, Solution Manager Change Request Management. Um, that's what we would like to evolve to. So in the next step, uh, we would like to come to a basic change management. And therefore, we have a few capabilities, functionalities like the time-based imports that are necessary and important so that you can as well decide on when changes should go to the test stage, when you would like to have the deployment maybe then to production later on, and you can as well um, plan that properly. Uh, we will bring the phase cycles then as well, uh, as mentioned, so that you have there yeah, something like the, the phase cycle on solution manager end, where we could then based on the releases in SAP Cloud ALM say, okay, you are in phase, let's say build or phase test, and based on that, different actions um, are available in the feature itself. We will have the workflow adjustment, so that's as well planned for the basic change management, because we know that our uh, workflow is quite simplistic at the moment. You definitely need to have their options to adjust it. So that's with these pre-built blocks that you can as well uh, embed into your process and then later on with the, the workflow management integration. And last but not least, we will have the first technical security functionalities and checks in there, like for example, the downgrade protection and of course the transport of copies, uh, which are very useful to keep then uh, the objects locked in your development system for a certain time. Um, as Valeria already explained perfectly. And last but not least, we would like to come then to this advanced change management. And that's what, if, yeah, what, what the, where the, the product vision is as well kind of included, like what, what we have seen, because there will be then on the one hand advanced uh, technical security functionalities and checks available, like then, um, cross system object locks, cross reference checks, not mentioned here, for example, as well, retrofit, what we are looking into, because we know that there is a need. And of course, the APIs that will be available then, so uh, that partners could enhance on top, like we've seen before for things like, let's say, digital signatures um, or as well template protections. Not only partners could enhance, as well customers could enhance with it, um, but it's definitely something that we would need so that APIs are available, um, that we have kind of an advanced change management that would fit to the needs of most of our customers as well that are aware and expecting functionalities that we have in SAP Solution Manager Change Request Management. All right, having said that, um, we will jump over the session feedback, but we come to our thank you slide because we want to thank you then as well. And um, yeah, the session is at the end now. So thanks from my side. Um, thank you also from my side.